Today we're talking about the fundamentals of enumerations or enums for short. We're going to talk about how to declare them, what they are, how to use them with a switch statement, how to use them with raw values and associated values, and then also how to use them as constants to help your code be more readable. But first, today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. Here we are in an empty playground. Let's start off with what an enum is. Uh, real simple, it's a group of related values. Let's declare one and that'll make more sense. Enum, uh, and then you name it, and this should be capitalized, that is convention. So we're gonna call this social uh, platform. And you'll see we're gonna do the group of related values. So uh, an enum has to have cases. So the first case is going to be uh, Twitter. Second case, uh, Facebook. Second case, Instagram. And you can see how these are a group of related values, right? Another common thing is like directions, northeast, southwest, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so case, uh, we'll do linked uh, in. And one of the most basic ways to use an enum is with a switch statement to do something based on whatever case you pass in. Let's write a function to demonstrate that. So here we're gonna do uh, func share image, and we're gonna do on platform, and then we wanna pass in a social platform. Right, so now we're gonna pass in either dot Twitter, dot Facebook, dot Instagram, and based on that enum value, we're gonna do the proper code to actually share that. Of course, we're not gonna do all that code here. Uh, this is all about the enums though. So let's let's talk about that. So we do switch on the platform, right? That's what we uh, we pass in here. So platform, and then I'm gonna wait a second because I'm lazy, and Xcode's gonna do this for me, right? You see here, a switch must be exhaustive. So what this is going to do for me is it's going to fill in all my cases with the enum because it's based on this social platform. Now again, each case has to have some code here. So like I said, this is where we would do the code to actually share the image on the specific platform. But I wanted to demonstrate was how you pass in a specific uh, enum value, and then based on that value, you do different stuff. Let's actually get rid of these uh, um, errors real quick. This is where the code would go to share the image on Twitter. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Again, we're just getting rid of these errors. Um, like I said, we're not gonna actually write out all the code to do the sharing of the image to each social platform, but you get the idea here. We'll scroll up here on Facebook, on Instagram, LinkedIn, just to show you that. Okay, so now when we actually call this function, watch how well it reads because we use this enum and then it'll demonstrate that it goes into the specific case. So here we can do, we can call share image and you see on and then it takes in a social platform. So we would pass in and here's the cool thing. You do dot and you get the autocomplete. Another benefit of using an enum in this pattern here is, you know, you can't just pass in anything. You gotta pass in one of these four uh, values. So we're gonna go down to Twitter. Cool, so look how well that uh, the call site of the function reads. Share image on Twitter. Doesn't even sound like code. Uh, so let's run this and you'll see down here, it should print, you know, this is where the code would go to share the image on Twitter. And then if I change dot Twitter to dot LinkedIn, again, same thing. This is where the code would go to share the image on LinkedIn. Of course, the print statements are just placeholders, but that is uh, the fundamental basic way enums are used most of the time. But now let's talk about other ways you can use them. Like I said, constants, raw values, associated values. Let's start with constants. Now this example is from my GitHub followers course. If you're interested in that course, seanallen.teachable.com. But in this course, we're using SF symbols. And you can see I created an enum called SF symbols where we can access the symbols we're going to use uh, very simply. So here you can see I do static let location equals UI image system name map pin dot ellipse. That's the name of the SF symbol. Whereas if I didn't have it in a constant like this, I would have to declare, you know, map in dot add ellipse. I'd have to write out that string every time. So here's where we're declaring the enum with static constants on the enum. Now watch how we use this. And by the way, just for clarity, this is the screen we're talking about. You can see how we have SF symbols for like repos and gists and following and followers, the little heart, the little people, those icons are SF symbols. So you can see how we're using it here in the code, right? Based on if it's a repo, gist, followers, we can just call SF symbols.repos. 
Why can we do that? It's because we've set that constant. And like I said, if we didn't have the constant, we would have to type out that UI image, you know, the, all the string that declares what SF symbol it is. But by putting into an enum into a constants file, anytime we want that SF symbol, all we got to do is do SF symbols dot gist, SF symbol dot followers. So this makes your code very readable and less error prone because you don't got to type out that string every time. Because as you may know, if you have a typo in that string, you're not going to get that image. So that's enums as constants. Let's move on to enums with raw values. So back to our enum definition up here at the top, we'll get rid of that bottom uh, console. So here in the enum, we can declare a raw value type. And essentially what a raw value is, it's attaching a value to the enum case. Let's do this and that'll make sense here. So let's say our social platform has a raw value of a string and we're gonna get my opinion on each of these platforms. So I can attach a string to this case saying, you know, this is my opinion, right? Twitter, this is my favorite. Cool, uh, Facebook uh, is going to equal, I never use this. Instagram, pretty pictures. <laughs> and finally, uh, LinkedIn, I need to start posting here right so those are my those are my opinions on the uh social platforms you know what i'm about to do if you follow me gotta line them up um so now we've attached this raw value of a string to the cases right so let's talk about using these and how we get access to the raw value is we would do twitter dot raw value as always let's talk about an example so we're going to create a new function here uh under here we're going to do funk get sean's opinion and then on, this is the argument label, platform. And we're gonna pass in again, a social platform that we've declared up there, right? We're passing in the enum. So let's get that raw value as we pass that in. So I can do let uh, opinion equal platform. This is the parameter we're passing in, which again is either gonna be dot Twitter, dot Facebook, dot LinkedIn, platform dot raw value. And you can see it's telling me that is a string doesn't have to be a string. You can declare it as an int, double, whatever you want to declare it as. Um, but in this case, it's a string. And we're going to do print opinion. And I just separated those two out so you could see what was going on. Of course, you could just do print. And I'm going to do this now to clean things up. But you can do print value. But I wanted to break that out so you could see what I was doing. So now when we call get uh, Sean's opinion on social platform, let's say dot Facebook, and again, look how nice that reads. Get Sean's opinion on Facebook. And if we run it, now we see. Well, let's comment this uh, function call out too so we're not getting that extra print statement. Run it again so it's nice and clean down here. I never use this. So Sean's opinion on Facebook is I never use this. Now let's pass in uh, dot .twitter. So again, what's happening when we call this function, we're passing in uh, dot .twitter as the platform and then whatever platform we pass in, we're getting its raw value. And again, the raw value is whatever we attach to it up here. And we said it's a string. So now when we get Sean's opinion on Twitter, we're gonna run it. This is my favorite. So that is how you use raw values. Again, you declare the type after uh, the enum, and then you attach you know, that type to each case. And then you can access whatever that raw value is by doing twitter.rawValue, LinkedIn.rawValue. Next up, let's talk about case iterable, where we iterate over all the cases in an enum. In order to get access to case iterable though, you have to conform to it. So after string, let's conform to case iterable protocol. There you go. So now we have access to what is called all cases, which does what it says. It, it puts all these cases into a collection and we can use it just like a collection. So let's comment out, get Sean's opinion so we don't get those extra print statements. And let's actually, uh, let's do print uh, social platform dot all cases. Remember, we get access to this because we conform to case iterable. And now this is just like any other collection. We can do dot count. So how many cases are in social platform? So we can just do all cases dot count should print off four. There you go. You see it does print off four. And like I said, we can use this like a collection. So we can also use this like a for loop. So I can do for platform in social platform dot all cases. And we can do print Let's do platform.raw value. So this is going to print out all the raw values we had attached to that. Platform.raw value. So now when I run this, we're going to iterate through all cases of the enum and print out the raw values. There you go. This is my favorite. I never use this. Pretty pictures. I need to start posting here. And again, just to reiterate, these are the raw values uh, up here for that. So we talked about raw values. We talked about case iterable. We talked about the basic way to use enums. The last thing I want to talk about is associated values with enums. And for that, let's make some room here. Uh, let's actually get rid of this bottom one. 
Let's comment this out so we don't get a cluttered print statements here. And actually to avoid confusion, I'm going to create a new enum called social media platform, um, just because uh, I don't wanna like go back and change all this and it would mess up all the raw value stuff. So to keep things clean, uh, I'm gonna create a very similar enum, just name it differently. Uh, so let's do enum, call it social media platform. Again, we're just naming it a little bit different so I don't get a duplicate naming here. Uh, not platform, platform. And again, we got case uh, Twitter. Let's add YouTube in here this time. Case YouTube, case uh, Instagram, case uh, LinkedIn. Okay, now we're going to add associated values. Uh, so let's say we wanna come up with a function where we wanna see if we're eligible to get a sponsorship based on like follower numbers or subscriber numbers, right? Let's pretend a company says you must have X amount of subscribers before you're eligible for sponsorship. So what we can do is we can add an associated value to the cases and you can name it here. So we'll call this followers and that is an int. You gotta give it a type and we'll do YouTube uh, subscribers. That is also an int. Now I could do this all the way down with Instagram followers and LinkedIn connections, but I'm gonna leave it as just YouTube and Twitter because I wanna showcase how you don't have to have associated values for every single case in your enum. In fact, only one could have it if you want. Um, so a little bit of a convoluted example, but I wanna leave those bottom two blank just to illustrate that point. So let's write our function to check for sponsorship eligibility. Funk get sponsorship eligibility, and then you can do four, and then platform again, same thing. And now this is not platform, platform. <laughs> and then now you get social media platform. Let's be careful not to make it our social platform like we had before. And here's our function, sponsorship, misspelled. Thanks to the Xcode underline for the misspelling. So now what we can do in switching off this platform, we're gonna have values associated to Twitter and YouTube. Switch uh, platform case uh, dot Twitter and we can do let followers. So I have access to this followers variable that we attach to it. And what I could do down here is we can get a little messy and do if you know followers, because I have access to this now, uh, is greater than 10,000, right? We can have some nested if statement, or we could use where to clean this up a little bit. So we can do some pattern matching here. So if the case followers, where followers is greater than, we'll do 10, uh, thousand and that underscore is just to space out the zeros. It means nothing. You don't have to do anything. It just makes it easier to read what number it is rather than having a bunch of uh, zeros after it. And Xcode's yelling at us right now. We'll fix that. So in this case, uh, we want to print eligible for sponsored uh, tweet. Cool. So we're eligible for a sponsored tweet. Now let's do the case of dot YouTube and same thing. Let subscribers and then where subscribers is greater than, let's say this is 25,000. Of course, these are just made up numbers. I'm not saying you have to have this much of a following to get a sponsorship, not at all. And let's copy and paste this print statement to save a little bit of time here. Paste that eligible for sponsored, we'll say a uh, video. So what happens is when we pass in Twitter, if the followers that we pass in, and you'll see, we're gonna call the function in a second, uh, if it's greater than 10,000, we're gonna be eligible. If not, we're not gonna be eligible. So let's get those cases where we're not eligible for sponsorship. So that is going to be case uh, Instagram, right? And we can put all these on one line too. Uh, case LinkedIn, right? Because those are the two that we don't really have a good following on. So we're not even, we don't want to be eligible for that at all. But now if we just do a plain old Twitter with no, you can delete this uh, stuff, with no associated value here, that's kind of like every other Twitter uh, case that doesn't already uh, fall into one of the top ones. And that's a good point to bring this up. The switch statement evaluates from top to bottom. So if we had this last case here at the top, it's gonna catch them all and we're never even gonna get to check the count of the followers. So let me finish this out and you'll, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about once we start running the function. Uh, what's the last one? Dot LinkedIn, no, dot YouTube. And again, we can get rid of the uh, parameter there. And if this is the case, let's paste that and we'll say, not eligible for sponsorship. So let's actually call this function and we'll start running through some scenarios so you can understand it. I'm gonna space this out so you can uh, read it a bit easier, let it breathe a little bit. Um, okay, so now when we call the function here, say get sponsorship eligibility for, let's pass in Twitter, dot Twitter. And you can see we get this uh, parameter here. Now we can pass in whatever number of followers we have. So let's say uh, 15,000 followers. So now when I run this, we should be eligible for a sponsorship, right? Because remember, the switch statement uh, evaluates top to bottom. So when I pass in Twitter with 15,000 followers, it's gonna go into this first case because it's the case Twitter and the followers are greater than 10,000. Well, it should, let's run it to test that. 
I should say eligible for sponsored tweet. Yep, eligible for sponsored tweet. Let's change this. Let's take a zero off of that and say we only have 1,500 followers. So again, what's going to happen, it's going to go into this switch statement. It's not going to fall into this case because we're not greater than 10,000 followers, right? We, we satisfied the Twitter part of it, but not the followers over 10,000. So it's not going to go into YouTube. So where it's going to go into is this one, this kind of catch-all where it's like plain old Twitter. So now when we run this, it's going to say not eligible for sponsorship. There you go. One last test for YouTube, just to show this is working. Dot YouTube, and let's give us 100,000 subscribers. We'll get there someday. Uh, hit run, and we should be eligible for a sponsored video. And again, just for test, let's make it 10,000 here, uh, and because we shouldn't satisfy that, and we should not be eligible. There you go, not eligible for sponsorship. So that's an example of how you can use an associated value on your enum. If you like my teaching style, check out the website on the screen. I started creating my own courses. We'll see you in the next video.